inoculants have been used for at least 20, 25 years now. Uh, this Biosync product is a, a new innovation in the inoculant world and in that we add a biostimulant technology to that inoculant. So we put in a root growth promoter and an anti-stress molecule that gets blended into your seed treater and put on the seed. So soybean yield is determined during its growth cycle. Early on in that growing cycle, you have quite a bit of stress um, from cooler, damper temperatures. Uh, this season, excess moisture. So we add in a, a molecule called glycine betaine that's helping uh, with your water stress. So basically, uh, it's, it's helping the plant to retain more moisture and to keep out excess moisture during these uh, rough conditions um, in the early part of the season. Uh, so we set up uh, four strips in this area that we're looking at. I went out and dug plants earlier this morning. Uh, we have some 18 uh, beans compared against a control uh, right next to it and on the outside are uh, some 20s. Uh, we counted, we just counted an average of uh, 51 pods on the biosync compared to 41 on the control. And this time of year, it's a little bit difficult to see differences in seed treatments, but earlier in the year, we took some photos and uh, did some scouting. And what we like to do with, with seed treatments, specifically inoculants, is to dig up the plant and look for nodules and not just number of nodules, but total mass of nodules. So the more nodules on that plant, the more active nitrogen fixation the crop is getting from the atmosphere. Um, and then also when you're scouting uh, soybeans for nodulation, you want to cut open the nodules and look for a nice pink grapefruit-like color in there, and that's um, meaning that your soybean is actually actively fixing that nitrogen. So uh, one, a few things that can happen under stress if it's uh, excessively dry outside is your, your nodules can uh, either be a black color in the middle or completely hollow. If you cut open those nodules and see that, it uh, means your nitrogen fixation process has stopped and you, you want to take a step back and look at your options. Um, either re-inoculating or, or replanting or, or maybe applying some urea or a, a UAN fertilizer to, to help get your soybeans uh, that, that nitrogen that it needs. Um, some other questions we get asked about inoculants is when do you want to inoculate is a good idea every time and the answer is no. There's reasons uh, growers in Iowa don't inoculate their soybeans wall to wall and so there's a few questions you want to ask one what's your rotation if uh, soybeans have been out of the rotation for two or three years it's probably a good idea to inoculate your soybeans like i said it's all about the population of living active rhizobia in that soil so if the ground's coming out of CRP land or has been corn on corn on corn on corn for several years, it's a good idea to add a little bit extra rhizobia to get, to get that uh, nitrogen fixation uh, process started. Um, other situations would be sandy soils that can't, cannot retain uh, quite as much moisture. Uh, I know there's a lot of sandy soils here in Michigan. They usually have lower uh, biological population so it's a good idea to reintroduce some rhizobia. Um, excess pH so if you're higher than 7.8 or lower than 6.5 good idea to inoculate as well as heavier soils. Heavier clays uh, can go anaerobic by um, becoming waterlogged and creating a negative environment for your bacteria in that soil. So rhizobia, they're aerobic, they breathe air just like you and I. So uh, certain conditions are less favorable for them.